It only came in a few different pieces we had to glue back together, but it's it's fine. Just your average day of ninja starring a MacBook into a glass door from eight foot away as fast as you can. Boy, have I got the treat for you. This is the Honda Pilot that we're morphing into right now. It's hit its 10 year old birthday. It's just going into those weird years of teenagers. Over the last couple hot seasons, it's slowly been like, oh, it's a hot day. Well, the AC's coming out cold. Oh, it's a hot day. The AC's coming out. Ironically, we have a gauge set and a vacuum pump and a whole bunch of cans of refrigerant and a scale. We're not going to do it. But we needed vintage air retrofits, which are uh, like the Kleenex brand of AC systems for classic cars. Uh, you could pretty much just shove whatever you wanted into them and they would run. Like they'd be low in refrigerant, they'd run right great. They'd be over refrigerated, they'd run great. But new cars, now let's just take this somewhere, let them do their thing. And it's also got to get a state inspection because we might be a little bit not going to Yep, just dropped off our baby pilot. It's all grown up. It's getting its first, what, colonoscopy? No, that's too young. That's too weird. You don't get a colonoscopy at 10. Unless you got some real problems. Five um, years. <laughs> what do you get at 10 years? Like your first physical for sports? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, she's going in. He, it is going into sport ball and it needs its first physical. I can't believe you forgot his name. Steve? It's, it's Henry. Henry. I forget all of our vehicles names. A he. We don't treat them like children. I treat them like children. Dumb children. <laughs> very, very dumb children. Whenever something goes wrong with our daily drivers, I get unreasonably mad. Like they should never break. They're Hondas. They're built to never break except for when they do or leak fluid from strange places. But when our classic cars break, I'm like, hey, what's a project? Oh, I hate my life. Like, I, we start researching what's wrong with it, we start fixing, but I never like doing anything for the cars that, you know, the workhorses that actually do something. Because the Buick just goes from one broken thing to the next, and the Beetle doesn't even have the chance to go from one broken thing to the next, because it never moves. The Mustang... You literally talked about chaining our trailer to it the other <laughs> yeah. day. Yeah. To get it off of the hydrangea that popped up in our grass out of nowhere. I did. We've chained our trailer to the fence and garage so that no one could steal it, or at least not move it. And I was thinking, since there's a plant growing through it now, we should chain it to something else that's unlikely to move so I chained it to a different vehicle. The field of dreams, that's what I call uh, the area of our backyard where I park things when I just don't want to think about them. But now I've decided to chain things from an immovable object which is our garage to another immovable object which is another car. So... Poor Beat Beat. You know, at least it's safe. Now it has a purpose in our backyard besides just holding the grass down. It's keeping a trailer safe. I guess it's not good either way really. Safety first. Well the pilot's getting its I don't know, colonoscopy. We're gonna go exploring today uh, around the area. I don't like pine trees. They're gross, they smell weird. I don't even like them for Christmas. Like you should just replace that with an artificial tree. Not a big, not a big pine tree fan. How do you on the pine tree? They're useless. Yep, I agree. I Pretty sure we accidentally found the perfect house. It's just a beautiful old like colonial style home with nothing crazy going on, but it's next to a parking garage. And we just talked about this earlier. I park things in what I call the field of dreams behind our house, which is just a grassy pasture that I, uh, I'm embarrassed by. But if we, we had a parking garage behind our house, Oh, that's the face of someone that's not happy with the prospect of a parking garage. I love it. Like, I irrelevant what the house... I mean, the house was actually pretty nice looking. It's like a graduated field of dreams. Of all the cars you could fit in there. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine all the jack stands we'd have to buy? And we randomly found a horse. So... <laughs> Look at that little guy. Well, it's giant, but it's little. We should go walking around outside more often. I wonder how many other animals are outside. <laughs> We're just driving around and we find this adorable little park bench with its own private beach access. Uh, being from Kansas, we don't have these things. And if we did have these things, it'd be like a gross lake or lagoon. So I'm gonna try out this bench. I think it's gonna go well because it's, well, it's a bench in front of a beach. How could this possibly go bad? Honey pizza, which is over at that tree, uh, says it's a creep. I don't know, I enjoy it. And it's got beach access and I hear a frog, so. We got the call about the pilot. He didn't check out so good. His physical was a little negative. He's he's all over the place. So apparently we blew out some control arm bushings along the way. Half the Honda pilots that we went and test drove had horrifying noises from their front suspension. It's apparently normal for them. Like they're into sliced bread. I'm into sliced bread. They're into breaking control arm bushings. I'm into breaking control arm bushings. And the more he was telling me about the bushings and how they're cracked, how they leak a black goo because they're fluid filled, and the more I just said stop and replace it. I, I don't want I don't want to deal with that in my life. I think I'm gonna sit here the rest of the day and just uh, take in all the frog sounds and that you know stale water air. 
we found this random thing that you could walk up and uh, we walked up it and this is like the least payoff you could get for 17 steps. At this point, like I don't even understand why there's a staircase going up here. It gives you a great view of um, all the trees that block the water feature. So there's where we parked the car. We got the AC fixed. It blows cold again, which is a miracle. Uh, and then they also found some bushings on the front suspension that were rocked. I, I didn't really notice any sort of weird driving things until they <laughs> replaced them. It was so reasonable, it didn't even make sense for me to get out a 10 millimeter. I didn't realize how bad this thing drove until they replaced it. Let's take a look at all the broken stuff they pulled off. At first glance, this doesn't seem too crazy. Like there's some crackage in there and some crackage in there and they're cracked on both, they're cracked all the way through. But the fact that I can actually like move this thing a little bit with just my thumb and the whole weight and pressure of the car is pushing back on these things on the bottom of the control arm. I just assumed it was tie rods. So I was like, ah, it's just steering related. She'll be fine. And the pilot needing repairs, the Buick constantly breaking something, the Beetle being used as a safety device for our trailer and FedEx using my new MacBook as some sort of ninja star. It's been a fun day. So if you like all this nonsense, subscribe. If you don't, well, don't subscribe. Oh, it'll, uh, maybe it'll be okay. I actually don't know if it'll be okay. We'll see.